Civil War Fort Duffield was built on the bluffs overlooking the town of West Point at the confluence of the Salt and Ohio Rivers. One might assume that the fort was built to protect Union forces and assets from assaults from the river. That assumption would be wrong, however. Today one approaches Fort Duffield up the road coming from the south and west. This is actually the direction that the fort was intended to protect from assaults from. As one approaches the fort up that trail, you can see the fortifications and primarily the trench that faces the earthwork fortifications largely face to the south and east. The wall itself is fronted by a significant trench which would have provided an additional obstacle to any forces assaulting from the south. As they approached up the hill, they would be confronted initially by what they saw as an earthwork, but as they approached that earthwork, they would be faced by a rather significant trench which provided an additional obstacle causing that earthwork to be much more significant than it might initially appear. In addition to this, it had several embrasures for artillery pieces cut into the earthwork. Here we're standing atop the earthworks themselves. And if we look directly across the redoubt, which is that large bowl-shaped area in front of us, which was intended to give cover for infantry, we are looking directly south over the trench. And if we turn 180 degrees, looking across the earthworks and to our immediate rear we can see the town of West Point just through that gap where we took the photo over or took the video overlooking the Ohio River and you can see the Ohio River and the other side Indiana in the background General Sherman had ordered the construction of this fort in 1861 to protect both his supply outpost down below in the town of West Point as well as the approaches to the city of Louisville along the Louisville-Nashville Turnpike. As you can see looking across the earthworks they stretch for a considerable length and again they're faced with that trench which makes them a, a more significant obstacle. One must also remember that from this position you're looking down a hill that rises for quite a significant distance before you even arrive at the earthworks. The area in front of us, as I said, contains two redoubts, one immediately in front of me, and one to the far left of the earthworks. And that area in front of us was also the location where in the severe winter of 1861 and 1862, Colonel Duffield ordered his troops to build cabins to protect themselves from the extreme cold that winter. Now the cabins that are currently up here at Fort Duffield are all reproductions. The originals were all burned, many of them by Confederate guerrillas 
who camped up here after the fort was largely abandoned when it became no longer relevant in roughly 1863 as the war had moved much further south. Here we're looking down from one of the artillery embrasures or positions on the earthworks and one must remember that while today the forests have largely grown back at the time this fort was active between 1861 and 1863 Colonel Duffield had ordered that the trees be cut back for a mile down this hill which would give quite a field of fire against any approaching enemy troops. Here we're looking down from one of the other artillery positions down the field of fire that would largely have covered the left side of the position. Again we can see that trench in front of us and we can also see some of the results of some of the storms recently and the fact that volunteers have largely been kept from caring for the position due to the COVID pandemic. And here we're at the far left end of the position where again we have the large bowl-shaped redoubt to give cover for infantry who could have taken cover in this position to prepare for an assault. As I've mentioned, all the wooden structures that are currently up here at the fort are later day constructions, reproductions, for the education of visitors. And we can see that many of these could use a little bit of care from volunteers. To say that this would have been an imposing position to assault is an understatement and likely explains why it was never attempted. Civil War Fort Duffield was never assaulted by Confederates until after it was basically abandoned in 1863, at which point, on numerous occasions, it's reported that Confederate guerrillas had taken positions up here and it had in fact burned many of the cabins or all of the cabins that had been built by the 9th Michigan in that winter of 1861 and 1862. Here we are at the trail that goes down to the parking lot at the foot of the hill. And again, we can see some of the results of some of the storm damage that has not been cleared. Part of that is due to the COVID pandemic which has been a, put a damper on volunteer efforts in the area. As we enter this trail, which heads down to the front, which is the exact direction from which an assault would have had to come at the fort's defenses, you can see that have much of the brush been cleared this is not, and would not have been, an easy position and an easy assault. You have to remember this entire way. Up this hill, you would have been under fire from at times what were as many as 10 guns in position at the fort. The hillside is relatively steep. You also have to remember you would not have been wearing modern hiking boots, but rather Civil War brogans. Which were slick soled, perhaps had a horseshoe nailed to the bottom. To give you all the traction you were going to get. Now, the ground is much rougher along the trail today because, of course, you have a lot more underbrush and a lot more growth which had been cleared out when the fort was active.
needless to say, it would have been a very daunting position to have had to have tried to assault. So here we're walking along what was once the Louisville-Nashville Turnpike, a major approach between the cities of Louisville and Nashville, two, two significant locations during the Civil War. The area we're in on the Turnpike is the low ground between the city of we or town of West Point on the low side to the north and the town of Muldraw at the top of the Muldraw Hill to the south. If you continue along to the south, you'll run into Radcliffe and then Elizabethtown, which was a significant location during the Civil War in Hardin County. Now, it was this route and this general location that the Fort Duffield position was designed to defend. General William Tecumseh Sherman felt threatened from the south and his position for his logistics at West Point and the city of Louisville. And the Louisville-Nashville Turnpike, he felt, was a significant enemy approach route. So that's why he ordered in 1861 Fort Duffield to be built to protect both of these significant positions. Some of the threats that concerned General Sherman were raised by cavalry units under the command of such notables as Morgan and Nathan Bedford Forrest. Here we're at one of the East Fork of the Tioga Creek crossings, one of the first limestone arch bridges that crosses the river along the turnpike. It's what gives the trail its name, Bridges to the Past. Of course, at this time of year, the creek is rather dry. So here we've reached the southern terminus of the accessible portion of the Louisville-Nashville Turnpike and the Bridges to the Past Trail. The gate that you see at your front enters Fort Knox itself. Of course, we are on the property of Fort Knox, but this area is where they allow public access. And up here, of course, at the terminus, is the Seabolt Cave, which is relatively well known in the local area. And the path that it leads through there. As I said, this is one of the furthest portions you can enter toward into Fort Knox before you are have limited access.